All right, here we go. Daniel Fornis here with Life Abundant Ministry. This is uh, really exciting for me, mainly because I'm always excited, but secondary to me being always excited is that number one, Life Abundant was birthed out of the chamber of relationship, of family, of intimacy, of abundant life. And it seems like every event or video comes from that same birthing chamber of relationship, <laughs> of abundant life, of people exploring new realms, of one part of the body having a question and another part of the body having an active revelation of it from living in the reality or engaging the realm of what somebody is asking about. And that's the best place to minister from. That's the best place to uh, get answers from. Relationship is the birthing chamber. Uh, revelation, someone living in that reality brings a real activation uh, to other parts of the body. So we're one and we all get each other's strengths because we're all in the sun and we all have a different perspective and a different expression and we can glean from each other and grow from each other. Um, and it's just amazing. I love, I love that everything comes out of relationship. So tithe. Do you even tithe, bro? <laughs> Is tithing okay to do? Is tithing right or wrong? Uh, there's a lot of concern and confusion in the body of Christ right now when it comes to this topic. People are ending relationships with each other over tithing. Uh, churches are condemning people made in God's image and curse them on behalf of God because they don't tithe. I mean, there is some wild thoughts about tithing, some wild conduct that comes from the conditioning of the parroting and pastoring and pulpit and preaching about what we think we know about tithes. So I'm gonna give you what I always give you uh, and that's the word of God. It's all I care about. Jesus is the word that became flesh so he could plant the indestructible seed of himself and me to awaken me to my Christ mind, my Christ consciousness, my origin and divine design of coming from daddy in daddy where I can live and move and have my being uh, and experience all of God's best. So the word of God is what matters to me. He watches his word to perform it personally. His word will not return void, non-negotionally. <laughs> and it will always do what he sent it to do and prosper in that thing provisionally. Um, so we're surrounded by a lot of promise when it comes to God, God's word. So the first thing that I wanna say before I talk about the specific topic of tithing that is about the topic of tithing and about every other topic that we can talk about uh, in the body of Christ, from the Bible, in Christianity, however you wanna frame it up, is there is no necessarily right or wrong when it comes to your journey. There's just not. Well, how can you say that? Well, number one, sin was dealt with before the foundations of the world. That's not even in the equation of God's mind. And there are scriptures that are trying to get us to believe and erase it from our mind as well. Here's one. I put your sin in the forgotten part of my mind for your sake. Wait a minute. Why would you put your sin in the forgotten part of your mind for my sake? Oh, so I can believe that you're not thinking about my sin so I can get it out of the equation of my mind and therefore my life. Yes, sin is dealt with. God has made you right. Well, I don't feel right, I feel unrighteous. God even reigns on the just and the unjust alike. He has called you justified. The blood of Jesus justified you. It is just as if you've never sinned right now. And he paid for that before creation. Pretty good deal for us. We got real good news for you. The gospel is real good news. Sin is dealt with. 
Right or wrong is the wrong tree all day long. There is never a good time to live in the duality of carnality. Now, there is some kind of divine dualities that are all fun, but we're not going to get into them today. But for the most part, 99.9% of duality comes from carnality. Right, wrong, good, evil. If I do good things, I'm a good person. If I do bad things, I'm a bad person. If I do my religious Christian calisthenics, I'm a good Christian. No, 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 no. None of that is biblical. You are right because he made you right. Your most beautiful expression of you has nothing to do with what you do. It has to do with who you are because you are an expression of God that nobody else can bring to creation. So you being you is the best thing that you can do. Having said that, the tithe. The tithe was a principle in an old covenant connected to promise. When you submit to that covenant and to the law of that covenant, you submit to all of the laws. And if you break one, you break them all. That's what the Bible says. So I would submit to you that there is a difference between submit and honor. I honor all of the Bible. I honor all of its principles. I honor all of the inspiration given by God that were given in different dispensations and different levels of progressive revelations in the Bible through people's personal relationship with Yahweh. And that is why we cannot be carnal when it comes to the way that we look at the word of God. The word of God is not shallow, it's deep, it's wide. It has many layers, many facets, many expressions, many frequencies, many faces of God that are being revealed at different times in different parts until Jesus came to reveal the Father, to reveal total goodness, total love, total forgiveness, total healing, total victory, total heaven, total divinity in humanity. As he is, so are you. So I would submit to you that submitting to a principle is different than honoring a principle. You submitting to the law and submitting to old covenant laws, submitting to the 613 oral laws, submitting to the 10 commandments is different than you honoring and valuing the principle that is being proclaimed by the word in those lesser covenants and less progressed revelations and different ages or dispensations. Ah. So you can honor the tithe and value it and even practice the principle. Just know that there's a difference between honoring it, which means valuing it and submitting to it. I do not put myself under anything but the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the dispensation of Messiah, the blood of Jesus, the finished work of the cross, the declaration of reconciliation to the awakening of our union and inclusion from Christ in Christ and will always be Christ. Our inclusion in the Trinity, our expression of divinity, that's what I submit to because that's Jesus. That's the pro most progressed revelation of God and us and who we are. Charles Spurgeon said the most important thing for any person on the planet is what they believe about God will determine what they believe about themselves. So if you believe you're separated, you're screwed. If you believe you're included, you're included. I would submit to you that God reconciling all men unto himself through Christ, no longer counting man's sins against them, is the good news of inclusion. If you will submit to the covenant and the dispensation of Messiah, the new covenant of Jesus Christ, the covenant of grace given unto all men as a free gift so that no man can boast, you will get all of the benefits of your submission to that covenant. Your participation is your submission, not your understanding. Now there is carnal understanding and spiritual standing under. 
To understand something in your mind is one thing. To submit to something in honor because it's the truth, whether you understand it all or not, is to stand under and submit. And then it gets to govern over you and encounter you and teach you about its realm and reality until you wake up and see it all and it becomes real to you because what you honor engages you. So honor and submission are brother and sister, okay? So I honor and submit to Jesus Christ and the new covenant that he released and the transition that he brought from the lesser to the greater, the reality of inclusion that he released into creation, the reality of salvation that he released into creation and the invitation for all of us to wake up in our mind and come in through the door of him that's in us so we can find out who we are, which is through seeing him in us, union, oneness, no separation. So having said that, when it comes to the tithe, you can honor the tithe and you can practice and participate in the tithe. In your heart, you can value the tithe you can value the principle that when you give your first fruit, your first 10%, your tithe to the Lord, when you bring it to the storehouse, the Bible says that your barns will be full, your vats will be overflowing, you will, a, a window of heaven will open, it will pour out unto you, giving you more than you can hold, and the, and the devourer will be rebuked, and all of these beautiful things that come with that principle that are connected to all of those promises that I proclaimed right now. I honor all of that. I value all of that. I submit to Christ and him crucified. I submit to Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ. I submit to the dispensation of Messiah. I submit to the new covenant. I submit to the reality that heaven is here right now. I submit to the blood of Jesus. I submit to Yahweh and the progressed revelation of him and him and us and us and him. I submit to union, I submit to inclusion, which is all new covenant proclamations. Those are all things that the cross communicates to creation to help heal humanity, if we'll agree with it. So honor the tithe. That does not mean you have to do or not do anything. I can value you from a distance and I can value you while holding your hand. I can value someone's belief system without necessarily agreeing and submitting to all of it. Does this make sense? This is huge. What I'm, what I'm saying right now is huge. And this is the answer to, do we do this or do we do this? You can do whatever you want, <laughs> according to Jesus. He said, all things are permissible. That's right. The one that everything was created by and for said, your Lord and Savior said, you have permission to do anything. All things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. And I would submit to you as a son, there is profit in honoring all of the lesser revelations, honoring, valuing them, finding gold in them, even practicing a lot of those principles that are connected to promises. Phenomenal. I want the devourer rebuked. I want more than I can hold. I want my barns to be full. I want my vats to be filled with new wine. That's great. But I want to submit to, I don't have to practice any principles because Jesus did it all for me and I get to rest because of that. And out of the revelation of his goodness and his great love, I repent and change my mind that the work of God is finished and I am part of his family permanently and I never have to die because of the death, burial, and resurrection that I was included in and that I can be myself because the cosmos is groaning for the sons of God to be made manifest, not a bunch of Christians trying to be good people. Me manifesting myself is the most valuable thing that I can do beyond practicing any principle because it's what all of the cosmos is groaning for. So I submit to the new covenant. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I submit to the rest that he paid for me to have. I submit to the Sabbath life that is mine all day long, 24, 7, 365, until the end of the bondage of time. That's what I submit to. 
Jesus. So you can honor the tithe. You can practice the tithe. You can participate in the principle of the tithe and you can activate and unlock the promises of the tithe. I would submit you can do all of that without submitting yourself to the law and making it legalistic and making it something you have to do. Do it something out of overflow. Do it out of desire. Do it out of honor. Not out of submission. Out of honor. Out of value. I value this principle. And therefore I will get these promises. Out of relationship. Out of an unction. Out of a leading. <clears throat> the daughter of God that, that proposed the question of the tithe basically. In her own personal way from her own personal circumstance. <clears throat> Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. The reason that came out of her mouth is that is a desire. So she will be practicing that principle out of relationship because it came out of her heart <laughs> and it came into a question so, so she could get clarity. And now there's clarity because this was, this was a good teaching. It wasn't super long. It doesn't have to be. There's a difference between submission and honor. One is something you put yourself under and it governs you and it rules you and it limits you and you have to do it. And if you don't, if you don't, that's not God's best. Freedom, family, being fathered, having fun, practicing this out of a desire that maybe daddy gave you. That's awesome. That's sonship. That's daughtership. And... As you guys progress and we progress into greater revelation and greater participation in sonship, the order of Melchizedek, the age in which we are in, you know, Zion, where the realm of the natural and the spiritual are becoming one because division and duality is dying through our awakening of being, a manifestation of the sun. It's awesome. It's awesome. So uh, the tithe is awesome. Just like every principle in the Bible is awesome. <laughs> the promises connected to it are phenomenal. <laughs> but as we grow in the revelation of sonship, like I was saying, we're, we're going to be giving a lot more than 10%. <laughs> I just did an event with Life Abundant and out of my personal bank account that did not get returned to me was over $3,000. That's a lot more than 10% of my income. Why? Because it's all God's and because I believe it's all God's, I'm getting access to all of what is God's because I am one with God and things present, things future, the world, all things are mine because I'm a son before time. No limits in my life. No limits in a son and daughter of God's life. And so the tithe, if that's a desire you have birthing in you, great place to start. Great place. And as you're trusted with that measure of giving, he's going to expand your capacity to believe you can give more, to believe you can receive more. Because an open hand lets things out that are his and lets things in that are yours that are his because all things are yours. This is when it gets good. This is when the limits come off. Every single person that gives, tithes, trades, seed sows, gifts, anything to Life Abundant Ministry, they will receive the promise connected to that principle. They will receive the intentional trade connected to their faith and their intentionality of engaging the treasury of heaven and Melchizedek. They will get the multiplication that they are aiming their faith at with their seeds and their offerings. All of those are different ages of giving in God's economy. All of them can be honored and participated in and those principles are connected to promises. Sonship is eventually where we will live out of. And that is a no limit life. No limit on our finances. No limit on our favor. No limit on our functionality in the Father. No limit. So I would say to you 10% is a good place to start from. But in the end, you're going to find out that when you give him all of you, you get all of him. And that is where you start experiencing total freedom. I'm all yours. 
All my money's yours. All my stuff is yours. All my family's yours. All my body's yours. All my time is yours. You're actually the Lord of my life now. And now your Lordship lives through my life because no longer I can live, but Christ who lives in me. <gasps> I'm, the, I'm a son of God. I'm one with God. I can do anything. I can go anywhere. Duh! Tithing is good. There's a difference between honor and submission. You can honor the tithe. You can practice the tithe. You can get the promises of the tithe without submitting to it and letting it be something that binds you. Amen. I love you guys. I bless you guys. Thank you so much uh, for your time. I bless everybody that tithes, seed sows, and trades into life abundant. Let it be done unto you according to your faith. In Jesus' name, amen.